I'll do it's Petapool. Uh, took a trip down to uh, Portsmouth Historic Dockyard uh, with my family on holiday. I uh, went to see HMS Victory and uh, also for the first time for me uh, the Mary Rose. Uh, but this first part of the video is the Victory. Need just a quick sweep around to see the rest of the dockyard. Uh, there's a lot of work going on at the moment where it's being restored. So a lot of the uh, woodwork is exposed and the top half of the uh, masts are all taken down for uh, renovation. But as you can see, when you get close to it, it's just huge. It's really, really awe-inspiring. Uh, I could spend all day there myself, uh, but I don't think my family would appreciate it. inside is the uh, living quarters for the crew and also where they ate and worked. This little plaque was about the Royal Marines, I think there's about 147 Royal Marines on board. That chap there who worked there in the white he was a really nice bloke and he gave us a lot of time talking to us. Uh, interestingly enough, only 20% of the ship is actually uh, left original from when Nelson uh, was on board. Uh, a lot of it was replaced and renovated during Victorian times and uh, it's obviously an ongoing process. Surgeon tools, really gruesome. This is about the uh, painting, the sketch that was made of where Nelson filed this painting here. That's the part where he actually was leaning against on the in the actual ship itself. A piece of the original flag that was flying at the time. Powder kegs. Sort of uh, ammunition packs, uh, what they put into the barrels. The store, what was on board. It's just various shots of uh, down in the deck. There's the uh, sort of joiners section where they were doing all the repairs. It's massive, you get lost when you're down there. There's the uh, kitchen area. Some of the amazing cannons, or guns as they were. That's the plaque where he fell. Okay, so all the anchors have been replaced with fiberglass replicas because apparently when it's in dry dock you're not allowed to have the originals on there because of the weight of them in case they fall um, there's a shot of me in a second there's the ship's bell where I'm in uh, leg irons and uh, this is the one now so this is where they would tie uh, sailors who were drunk and disorderly they would uh, give, give them a, a taste of the cat and nine tails and leave them to sober up then you've got Nelson's crib uh, which also served as his uh, coffin uh, the upholstery was done by Lady Hamilton apparently that's the sword of the first ever sea lord That's where they entertain all the uh, guests from abroad, they still do to this day. That would be cool eating on there. It's a bit of a wood carving. And then just some shots of the exterior to uh, finish off. really cool and 
if you haven't been down to see HMS Victory, you should. It's well worth the money. This next part is the Mary Rose. So this is the first time I've been to the uh, Mary Rose and it's the new exhibition and it's really amazing. So basically um, you can see through uh, loads of viewports into where they are still preserving uh, the timbers and what they've done is originally since 1982 they were spraying the Mary Rose with a, a mixture which is basically like a wax and now it's they've turned off the sprayers and it's in this humidity controlled environment uh, that's what the black pipes are for and they're slowly removing the moisture uh, and which will just basically leave the wax which is hardened and it'll all be preserved um, they will at that point take off the uh, take away all the black walls the limiting your view so everywhere you are when you're walking around you'll be able to see the actual um, hall itself and what they've done with all the stuff that was inside the uh, ship all the cannons and all the um, clothing and weaponry is that's set out uh, in a sort of a deck format so as you walk through the exhibit you walk through the different layers of decks and you see where these uh, artifacts would have been on the real Mary Rose and it's really really cool what they've done and the bits that they haven't found are in clear plastic so you can see which parts are authentic and which parts aren't Tells you where you are on each deck, which is always handy. There were lots and lots of cannons, and I'll try to take various shots of the timber work as I was going around from different views. can't use a flash so I've had to just take them in the light that's already provided and hope for the best. This next part's cool, the uh, ship's dug. Apparently it was uh, two and a half years old and would have been on board to uh, help catch the rats on board. Lots and lots of information on the plaques about what you're looking at. Um, that was sort of a shrapnel. Um, round that they put in there filled with pebbles where they used to scour the decks very nasty some beautiful um, embossing on the cannons That's the first uh, gun that they found. 
different bones with different diseases, lots of skulls, and lots of uh, that skeleton there. And the next shot is where he's been uh, reconstructed as to what he would look like, which is quite spooky. Lots of bone combs and uh, leather work still survives. Now that part there is the only remaining 16th century crow's nest in the world. And also above it was the um, wildfire spear that they used to throw from it which was to try and set fire to the enemy ships. Thanks for watching.